All right, so finishing up the uh, chapter on the solar growth model. We're going to think about how well the solar growth model describes the real world. Okay, so uh, let's think about, say, over time. We've got output per unit, excuse me, per unit of human capital today, and maybe output per human capital in some time in the past. All right, so well, another way of writing that is the same. Let's just say that output today is x times higher than output in the past. We can write it this way. Okay, and then you can see through the properties of log, you know, we can separate this, right? This is going to be log x plus log y past, and then minus y log past. So these guys cancel out, and we end up with just log x. So if we compare output today to output in the past, we can think about it if we, as long as we think of output today being X times higher per unit of human capital than it was in the past, we can just think about this difference as log of that factor. Okay. Now recall with Cobb Douglas, our little y is going to be little k to the power alpha. We derived that earlier. Take logs on both sides. So uh, log y is going to be equal to alpha, right? When you take we have this property that when you take the log of uh, something to a power, we can take that power and put it in front of the log. Okay, just a property of the log function. <clears throat> so we get this relationship that the log of y is equal to alpha times the log of k. So what we can write is that uh, since uh, the log of x is equal to the log of uh, y now to log of y in the past, we've argued that, right? Is that these things are equal? We can also write the log of x is equal to alpha times log of k now through this relationship, and also minus alpha times log of k in the past. All right, so we've got an, an alpha here that we can divide both sides by. So the capital level now minus the capital level in the past in logs is going to be equal to log of the factor that output is higher today uh, than it was in the past times alpha. Okay, exponentiate. So take the exponential of both sides and uh, right since log this is equal to just to give you one more step. This is equal to log of little k now divided by log of little k in the past. That's a property of subtraction of logs. You can write it as a quotient of the arguments. Okay, exponentiate both sides. And what you're going to get is uh, little k now divided by little k in the past. This is a power one divided by alpha. We're going to get x to the power one divided by alpha using the same property of logs that we used here. Okay. So that's a bunch of manipulation, but x is measurable in the data. Okay, so x is the factor by which output today is higher than uh, output in the past. And this is capital levels now and in the past. We have data on those as well, of course, per unit of human capital. And then alpha, um, this is something that we sort of know um, in the sense that if you have a Cobb Douglas production function, you'll just have to believe me here. Um, alpha is, if alpha is the share of capital, then it's this, it turns out that expenditures on capital uh, should be about one third of total expenditures type of thing. Or the if you look at the total costs of production, one third of those costs should be capital if alpha is one third, and then two thirds should be on labor if, if one minus alpha is two thirds. So, um, so we sort of know this by looking at data, it's about 0.3, it's about one third. So, uh, so yeah, we're basically going to say that this coefficient here is going to be about three. So let's assume now the productivity now and in the past are the same. Of course they're not, but let's assume that to see how far we can go to explain the differences between output today and output in the past based only on levels of capital, not on productivity. Okay. Now we can interpret the little k's since since alpha uh, since a is the same. The little k's are just uh, capital per worker, right? So you know it's capital per effective worker, which is a times l. But since the a is the same in the numerator and the denominator, 
we can cross them out and interpret this as capital per worker. You know, to be formal here, K is AL, and then there's like a now here divided by, there's like a P here for past, ALP, and we've assumed here that the A's are the same. We can cross those guys out. So what we're really comparing here is output per worker, or capital per worker in now and capital per worker in the past. This again is the uh, amount that output is higher today than it was in the past per unit of human capital. Or in this case, where we've assumed that technology hasn't changed per worker, output per worker. Okay, so output today to a rough approximation, you know, this is just a rough calculation. There's nothing too serious about this. Just a back of the envelope calculation. It's about 10 times higher than 100 years ago okay. per worker. So output per worker is about 10 times higher than 100 years ago. Share of capital production is one third, as I just said. So this alpha is around one third if we think that production is a Cobb Douglas production function, also another assumption. So what do we expect? Well, x is equal to 10, alpha is equal to one third, so this is to the power three. 10 to the power three is 1,000. So we expect that capital now should be 1,000 times higher per worker than capital in the past. Okay. If we know that out, uh, output is about 10 times higher. But that's way too, fi that's way too high. Capital is nowhere near a thousand times higher now than it was in 1900 or 1920. It's more like 10 times higher per worker. So, um, you know, what this sort of says, remember we made this assumption that productivity hasn't changed. It says that if we were to just try to explain the size of the economy today per worker relative to what it was in 1900 or 1920, um, we wouldn't be able to do it with just capital. It's, we don't have enough more capital and it's actually kind of a general point. If you think about um, trying to maintain a growth rate, this is little k, this is say y, little y. Let's suppose we wanna to try to maintain a growth rate of little y. Well, you can see that if we increase capital, if we suppose we wanna increase y from here up to, you know, from here up to here. Okay, well, that means we have to increase capital from there up to there. Now suppose that we want to increase output from here up to here. Okay, well, that's going to be difficult for me to draw, but that means that we're going to have to increase capital from here up to way over here somewhere, right? So the point is, like, to increase output the same amount as your economy gets bigger is going to get harder and harder. So, you know, we have this big change in output. It's going to have to be a massive amount of change in capital. And then if, you know, the output change is even bigger, if our economy is still growing, which it is, right, the amount that the economy grows, we're going to have to have a much larger growth in the amount of capital. So right now this is a thousand, but suppose that output today were a hundred times bigger than it were, than it was in 1920, you know, so maybe in, let's say in another hundred years, there's another tenfold increase in output per effective worker. Well, then we would have a hundred here for X if we're comparing to 1900 instead of just 10 times X. Then we're going to have 100 to the power of 3. Uh, and then that's going to be whatever 100. I guess you're going to have 100 to the power of 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. A million. So then it's going to be like a million. Uh, the capital would have to be a million times higher than it was in 1920. And that's just ridiculous. There's no way that's going to happen. And it's going to get worse the more the economy grows. So that's true. And it's also true if we look at rich and poor countries. So we look at output in a rich country relative to output in a poor country, and then the capital level in a rich country relative to capital level in a poor country, and you'll see that the capital levels can go nowhere close to, uh, to explaining the difference in output levels. So it suggests that it's not just capital. It has to be something else. And since we're dividing by the number of workers, this is all output per worker, capital per worker, it's not the number of workers either. It has to be productivity. So productivity differences between now and the past have to explain more about what's about growth in the past and then also between countries. Okay, so human capital differences between countries. Um, okay, so yeah. 
So another thing we could look at here, just very briefly, is we could, this is a second argument that it isn't capital that's causing differences between countries in terms of output level. Let's think about what rate of return we'd expect to get on investments. So, uh, you know, we can take the derivative of our production function, and that's going to give us the rate of return of an additional unit of capital. Okay, so we have Cobb Douglas, you take the derivative of little k to the power alpha, you're going to get this, replace our k with y. Okay, so since we know that y is k to the power alpha, we can do this. Uh, we can do the substitution. All right, so if alpha is one third, then the um, power here is going to be negative two, which means that if, uh, if you increase output by a factor of 10, then the rate of return is going to be lower by a factor of 100. Okay, so it says that, you know, if you look at a country that's output per worker is 10 times that of another country, so that's like a rich country today versus a very poor country today, we would expect that the rate of return on investments in the rich country is 100 times lower than it is in the poor country. Also something that is nowhere close to being the truth. Okay, so here's another argument that this model isn't reflecting the real world very well without technology. So maybe the thing that's causing the differences almost certainly is this human capital or productivity per worker. Unfortunately, we don't really focus on it in this model. It's just exogenous. Uh, so uh, that could be one thing. Another thing also might be that we're underestimating uh, spillovers in terms of capital. Maybe when you have more capital, you get even more productive because there's sort of complements in, in terms of uh, uh, capital levels or something, spillovers. So that's it. Next time we'll talk about the Ramsey model and I'll leave it there.